set hexagons on. Oh, sick. <laughs> well, diamonds, but you know, whatever. Also, I left my good mouse at work, so I'm using my spare. Wait. For scale. Oh my, that is an itty bitty mouse. But <laughs> I edited an entire YouTube video on it. Ugh. It wasn't fun. Rest in peace, your wrist. Hmm. I have massive hands, so I cannot use tiny mice. Uh, I hate tiny mice because I, whilst I don't have massive hands, I have very big palms. Mm -hmm. So like my palm is the same length as my fingers, which obviously most people, in fact, probably a bit larger, but most people don't have. So it makes using normal size stuff weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, Barry's like, I'm just going to go sit out of camera shot. He's moved two feet just specifically so that he can't <laughs> be on camera. He is aware. He's like, oh shit. I Are just we on it. Twitch? Yes. With the stream? Are we on your Twitch or is it there a gaming fix? Both. Okay. What is it? Is it a fix podcast? I think it's gaming fix. Uh, one second. I'll double check. Yes. I'll just send you a picture of what I'm seeing right now. These two boys. Yeah. Twitch.tv slash gaming fix. I will send that into the chat so you don't have to type it. I think a war is about to take part, take place. That's a very <laughs> yes. <laughs> that picture looks like there's something a brewing. Yeah, okay, why do I have thirteen notifications <laughs> on Twitter? Oh, what have you done? I don't know. It's probably like one person has made a funny tweet and then that's it. I get tweets. I get like notified when Jeff Gersman says something funny. It's like okay, I haven't asked for this. Let's see. Yep, yep. I didn't okay. click the bell. Okay, no, yeah. A lot of this stuff is old. Okay, yeah, no, all of this stuff is stuff I've seen. What the fuck? <laughs> Just do what I do. Don't use Twitter. Uh, but so much terrible and also good stuff happens on Twitter. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> How can I aggressively self-promote myself if I don't have a Twitter account, Alex? How can I not aggressively self-promote myself but think I should aggressively self-promote myself if I don't have a Twitter? Uh, okay. Are we ready? Yeah, sure. You, you sound unsure. Are, are you positive? Uh, uh, yeah. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Guess how many calories are in this can of Heineken Blue zero percent beer? Um, how many calories are in your sister? Oh. <laughs> Good thing I wasn't streaming that part out, so it makes no sense. Uh, oh, I, wait, I'm gonna say yeah. 250 calories. 69. Nice. <laughs> nice. It's the same as in your sister. <laughs> Uh, okay. Okay, if you're uh, watching this, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry this is so. <laughs> yeah. We're starting on a real classy foot. Uh, okay. This is what happens when Allison doesn't turn up and makes us all talk nice. Yeah, we, can, we can promote the Pornhub again. <laughs> Guys, you should see what Larry has managed to do over here. This is definitely more. Oh, good. All right. Should okay. we do this? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. I, I was ready, and then you were like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." I, I guess. Okay, we good to go. Hell yeah! I was born ready. Uh, hello, and welcome to Gaming Fix, episode fifty-three. On this January 27th, 2019, or 26th, depending on which side of the dateline you exist on, if you're in the past, my my future is my present, and my presence is the past, my presence is a present, kiss my ass? That's not how that layer goes. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. Uh, I am your host, Andre Cole, uh, and I am joined today by one. Alex Galinas. Hey, I'm here living in the present in episode 54. Whoa. 
Whoa, that's wait. Did I say I said episode fifty four, right? I'm no, it's fifty three. Uh, is it? Oh, I dang it! <laughs> You're so close. Oh, uh, I was. I you know what happened? I was looking at the page. Like, okay, I'm gonna make, make, figure out what episode it is, and then I just read the episode number. Well done. But we're not gonna uh, redo it because we do it live here on Gaming Fix. Uh, and, you, um, hey, oh, hey, sorry. hey! Wait until you're introduced. <laughs> Never. Uh, that is the voice of one Sam Harrison. Did you guys ever listen to Rebel FM? I kind of got uh, the guy Arthur Geese from Rebel FM. I like mm-hmm. mentally fell out with, but I really used to like that show. And at the beginning of every show, they would try and make Anthony guess what the episode number was, and and he got it right like one in every fifty. Like it was insane how low his ability was to get the actual episode number right. Makes you wonder. Okay, it's it's right. Makes you wonder if it's. Right. You know, like the number's not important. What is important is that you, the listener, are here joining us to. Uh, to talk about video games. Well, you're not going to talk about video games. Do you guys what? ever talk back to your podcast? Is that like a thing people do? <laughs> is it a two-way conversation in which yeah, one, like, one of the like, parties you know, is deaf? They, you know, there's like that picture, like the meme of like the kid sitting eating ice cream next to the picture of all the other people sitting and eating ice cream. What? Like what it's like listening to a podcast. And it's like a bunch yeah. of people having fun eating ice cream. It's, I haven't but, seen but, this picture, but sure. Oh. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Uh, we're here to talk about some video games. Uh, we've played them. Uh, more video games than I've played in the last few weeks of the year. Uh, but, but, but Andre. Yeah? yeah? Why is Sam taking his shirt off? Uh, you know, he's just trying to recreate the glorious scene <laughs> from last year's Game of the Year yeah. when I came to the defense of Dragon Ball Fighter Z uh, and accidentally took off both my shirts instead of just my sweatshirt. Yeah. That was a good time. <laughs> yeah, I was banned but, on Twitch but, for showing my nipples. Yeah, rest in peace, our Twitch channel. But Andre, know what game you will be playing? Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. When they um, put in the new DLC, I believe that is supposed to be announced today. Oh, really? No. Cool. There's a there's like a tournament, and then after the tournament, I think, or at the tournament, they're supposed to announce like some season two stuff and i think jaren got leaked like in a magazine like they're like we're gonna we're gonna like announce stuff later and then there was a japanese magazine that was like hey look it's jaren in this game That's so uh, yeah and but, it looks like there's gonna be 11 characters instead of like eight i think was last time I saw. <laughs> that's not what i was alluding to but <laughs> well <laughs> I-, I was gonna I say I was going to say there's a new game that's going to be coming from Retro. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that that's a thing. I might play that. I've never played any of the other Metroid Prime games. No? No? no. None of the GameCube ones? Well, nope. Were they all GameCube? I, I all played, three like, uh, the, the third one is Wii, right? Yeah, uh, that I, sounds right. I, I, just played, played the first one. I played some, like, demos. I Maybe I rented the first one once, but I didn't get very far. I yeah. I played about two hours of the first one, and that was about it. According to a Game Informer writer, like a remaster trilogy is complete and was supposed to be announced in December at some point. Hmm. But that's not the case. Uh, so maybe if like a direct happens in the near future, we'll get one of those announcements. Yeah. I don't know. That seems it, it seems like the right move. I mean, it was kind of ballsy of them to say, hey, we just basically canceled all the development of the past two years and we're starting right. over super yeah. cool for them to actually come out and say it though yeah instead of just like letting like a rumor get out and someone be like a jason trier being like yo metroid prime 4 has been like canceled and restarted yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's what people wanted was people wanted retro to make that game and so now they get that and it from what i've seen people seem to be taking it really well and they're like hey cool uh I'm glad that you like admitted that the game was not in a good spot and you want to fix it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I have my worries. I have my worries that retro will have not, not have evolved and it'll be the same as the old games, but then again, I mean, 
They're called retro, not future. <laughs> Sigh. Anyways. <laughs> that was good. So, you know, uh, but yeah, I hope those games are good. Uh, people are speculating that they were working on something else, and that's why they didn't start Metroid Prime 4. And so maybe that whatever they're working on is either almost done or, or done and ready to come out so they can focus fully on that. So that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, if they have not I'm pretty. I, who wants that? Like, really? Who wants that? Really? Wow. Why? Why? Uh, yeah. Star Fox Adventure was cool. And so I felt that's... there's more places to go with the Star Fox license. Racing game? What? What was if the... I can't transform between flying and water and a uh, car, what's the point? The, the three modes of transport, flying, water, car. Yeah, you should play some Sonic, uh, whatever. What's the, uh, new, what's the new one? The uh, Sonic Racing Team? Let me just Sonic Team Racing. Uh, sorry to correct you, Alex, but I think that Andre is referring to The Crew 2, Cat's racing <laughs> game of 2019. Uh... Uh, it's Sonic Team Racing. That sounds weird. Why? Like you, you're on a team, but like the teams are all predetermined. Yeah. It's like Double Dash, but not. And I'm I don't, not sure why. I don't. I don't give a shit about Sonic, so I don't know. Except that time Sonic kissed a lady. That's pretty cool. <laughs> like a That's Final fun. Fantasy lady, basically. Yeah. I, I don't know. Sonic Let's... Sonic Mania was good. I I don't care. <laughs> it's like that's really. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's that's nice i just i don't care about sonic <laughs> i'm right there with you but sonic mania was good that's about all i got i am i am interested in seeing that sonic movie though oh my god yeah oh 100 percent day one <laughs> I can't those, legs. Legs. those legs yeah the legs sold me <laughs> something i can aspire to be like like yeah. fuzzy yeah um so that's yeah that's some stuff but uh we've, we've also played some video games uh yeah Alex, have, you, have you played any video games i have uh i played two games both are kind of worth talking about one is less so but um mm, we the got first, time. yeah the first one i played is a little game called gree and uh, i'm not that far into it unfortunately i has how super, far is not that far like half an hour um, okay because no i've been really enjoying it so far uh the only reason i've stepped away from playing it is because my computer is having issues so no. um, yeah like my I've, i started noticing the issues when i was getting like super frame rate drops in overwatch and it was freezing every now and again i was like that's weird uh and it was getting worse in gree so it was like stuttering and like almost seemed like it was crashing out so uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna turn it into a tech support stream. But um, the the did game you set is your CPU priority to high. <laughs> yes, actually, <laughs> I did. I learned from you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, but no, I'm really so. Far, I'm only half an hour in, but so far I'm really enjoying the aesthetic and the music and like the vibe and everything. It's mm -hmm. super painterly and like kind of morose and like it has some elements of journey already. Like there is a sliding section, which was really nice with like the sunset in the background. I uh, appreciate all of that for sure. But yeah, I I don't have that much more to say about it because I haven't gotten to like what the actual story is. Uh, there's some certainly some vibes going on there of like she mm -hmm. seems kind of grieving. Uh -huh, grie. yeah. uh, but it's like the title was a metaphor. Actually, actually it's, it's Grease and she is greasing. <laughs> oh, uh, I had it all wrong. Um, here's the game that I want. Oh my god. So She's much. got chills. They're multiplying. Yep. And they're loving in the gotta summer. Keep up that multiplier. She's got skills. They're multiplying, please. God. John Travolta. Whatever. With the um, inputs you're supplying. Stop. Do you remember that John Travolta country song? For God's sake. <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> All right. All right. So sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so since my poor computer is dying and having issues, that meant I got to play games on one of my other existing platforms. So 
I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys about what this game is first before telling you what it is to excite you. So um, a little tease. Uh, Are you gonna read the store description and then get, make us guess what game it is? No, but do you guys like games with like super deliberate motion, like Dark Souls or Monster Hunter? Yeah, yeah. You know me. Do you, Zero percent. Do you like characters? That's, that's a lie, Sam. Do you like characters? I do like Monster Hunter. That's true. But do you like characters who define every era that they're in, like especially the 70s, 80s, 90s, and aughts? Like, you mean like multiple characters and then like each character is very specifically from a different era? No, or... it's more that they evolve to fit the era and then. They... Oh. oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so we're talking about Shenmue. Go on. Yeah, it's definitely Shenmue. No, but it's an Android game. Uh, and said characters are Garfield and Normal. <laughs> Um, <laughs> maybe you should play Garfield Rush. No, I feel like I've been Rick Roll. Wait, what? Maybe, what? You, maybe you should play Garfield Rush. I it's... feel like I've been duped. <laughs> I'm sure. Are you going to ask me for my credit card information? No. For free V bucks, just play Garfield Rush. It's don't play that game. It's fine, but it's inoffensive. But it feels like an asset dump. <laughs> like, <laughs> let me like. The first thing I noticed is that it's full of stock sounds that I've heard in 20 other games. But the funniest thing I found is that they give Garfield some voice lines and it sounds like he has like four or five different voice actors every time. <laughs> like it never sounds like the same person. So it's and, not Bill Murray. No, it's not Bill Murray or the guy who voiced him in the <laughs> cartoon. Uh, what if, Bill Murray did Garfield because he thought it was a Coen Brothers movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, Do you know um, how you hire Bill Murray? Have you heard about this? No. He doesn't have an agent. He just has a voicemail line. And you can call. And if you leave a funny enough voicemail, he'll take the job. Really? Pretty much no matter what it is. Yeah. That's amazing. That's how they got him for Zombieland. Like, there's so many weird stories about Bill Murray and how mental he is. That's Sorry. amazing. No, yeah. don't worry. There's I'm not. To find the article where I found out about it. There's, there's not that much to say about Garfield. Uh, whatever it's called, Garfield Rush. It's, it's a runner. You swipe left and right on your, on your phone, and it takes like an hour for him to go through his animation. Um, okay. It's not very good. I was like, where is the Dark Souls Monster Hunter deliberate animation connection? Because <laughs> you swipe up on your phone, and it takes him like a second to jump, and then like he does a couple flips, so he's in the air forever. Mm. I, i'm so glad you shared that with us i look forward to hearing more about it oh, and don't worry it'll be uninstalled by <laughs> within the past, well, within the next approximately 11 months time yeah. oh yeah it'll definitely be coming up then for best asset flip <laughs> that should be a new category <laughs> uh, yeah that's all i got i have a broken computer and i played like two hours of this shitty garfield game <laughs> I'm sorry, I've accidentally pasted the wrong message into our chat. Oh. But the right one is now there. Uh, okay, well, uh, Sam, uh, have you played anything else other than the game that we both played? Or do you want to just talk about the game we both played? Um, I did. I, I have played more of the Konami Pixel Puzzle Hell yeah. uh, pretty much every day to and from work this week. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing, as I was talking to you about this last time, I should bring it up, oh, and mid puzzle is being able to use the stylus basically makes it free Picross DS. Yeah. So I'm having a great time. Yeah, it's the best version of Picross I found outside of the DS ones. Uh, I've just found, I've been playing that too, but I also last night just found this game called Tents and Trees, um, which is, it's also free. Uh, it's similar to Picross in that, you know, you've got a grid and you've got numbers on the grid with how many things you need to put in, how many tents you need in each row. Mm -hmm. And the board is filled with trees in random spots and each tree can only have, or you put a tent next to each tree there cannot be two tents touching like diagonally or wow. like side on any of the sides. Hmm. So you have to, basically you're filling in a campground, but you can't let any of the like tents touch each other. It's interesting. kind of interesting. So is it, uh, is there always one solution or is there like multiple solutions? Uh, early on, it seems like there have been a few that have like, Oh, I could maybe switch these two around. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it seems like there's only 
one solution or it's like 90% one solution. And then the very like last two or three, maybe you could have a little bit of influence on, but gotcha. that's not pretty cool. No, actually. It's like a different approach to pick cross, uh, instead of making a picture or whatever you're, uh, like it starts off with like a five by five grid and goes six by six, seven by seven and so on. And there's like a hard seven by seven, hard eight by eight versions and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe give that a try. If yeah. Konami pixel puzzle is doing it for you. Uh, so, but other than that, Sam and I have also played the Anthem VIP demo. Yeah, I was going to play some more of it actually, uh, because I wanted to try out a different javelin. Mm-hmm. But just to get time, get to, to go back to it today. But I think I will play tomorrow. Yeah, it's how, it's how a long, cool thing. How long is the demo on for? I think it's on for. Is it the end of it's through the weekend? Yeah, I think it's through the weekend. Cool. I think there's still a free code on my account if you want it, Alex. I don't think my computer would cooperate. <laughs> if you've got a, you can PS4? play it on PS4 or. Oh, that's true. You can uh, play it on pretty much anything. Yeah, we'll see. You can play PS4 with us. Uh, I'm. I'll, I might be busy, but yeah, <laughs> it's 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 a cool thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, technical problems with that demo aside, they seem to be mostly resolved, at least on the PS4 end. Um, yeah. I, I saw a reset era thread or like a comment in a thread where it was the guy who did like the packet dump or like was tracking the packets for no man's sky. And was like, there's no multiplayer in this game, guys. It was, it's not there. It's not saying that kind of information. Mm-hmm. He did the same thing for the Anthem demo. And he was saying that if it didn't connect to the game, it would just flood the servers with re- reconnection attempts. So then EA was just oh, like yeah. themselves. Oh, so is that why people were getting those crashes? Uh, maybe, or like that somebody. might've been like why the server got fucked is cause like if someone didn't connect, it just like slammed the server. <laughs> uh, why people weren't able to log into FIFA. Yeah. Yeah. That's why everything that EA, like you couldn't do Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer. You couldn't do like anything. <laughs> uh, by the time I got on, it was like I could get in, but then there were like infinite load screens. That stuff mostly got resolved throughout the day. But what I will say before we actually start talking about like our experience playing the game is that despite all the connection attempt or like, you know, all the connection issues, having to like getting stuck in an infant loading screen, having to close the game and re- uh, reboot it to then load into like the area I was supposed to be. Usually it would say, oh, you're in an expedition. Do you want to continue that? And then it would, instead of loading me back into like Fort Tarsus, it would load me into like the world. Uh, I, I wanted to keep doing that because I wanted to play the game because it was so much fun. Yeah. Uh, so even despite all like the technical issues, I was enjoying my time when the game worked like a lot enough to deal with all the shitty connection stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, I played a little bit of Anthem back in the uh, uh, alpha. I was like, what's the other A word that describes Anthem? Uh, and so I knew a little bit about, I, I knew the controls going in. So like I was able to like quickly get up to speed and start flying around and stuff. Uh, and like they, the alpha, you start at like the beginning of the game and this one, you start at level 10 and you can go up to level 15, uh, and you can like do other stuff while you're playing, you know, like, uh, you can do like hard difficulty modifier on the missions and stuff like that. Uh, and there, that ha- actually has other, it has loot in it and it has the other javelins that you, you can access one of one additional uh, for, uh, including the ranger, which is like the default one that you start with. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, game's very cool. Uh, shooting is neat. I, I wouldn't say it's like as good as like destiny. Uh, like the shooting is kind of the thing in destiny where I think the movement is the thing in Anthem. And like, I, I really love, uh, flying around that world like every time like i go into like a flight sequence like just running on the ground and then jump into the air and just start my jetpack it feels so fucking good uh while i was playing with sam he got like uh he got downed and so i, I jumped down like he was on the side of a cliff and so i jumped down and i picked him up and then we both like jumped up and flew off and then got back into combat and i was like man that was that felt really cool it looks so cool too uh 30 FPS aside. 
Yeah, I'm impressed how good it looks. But like Destiny's 30 FPS as yeah. well. Yeah, like I just a long I game wish game. there was the option. But also Destiny's competitive, so I can understand like the the 30 FPS lock. Like that makes sense. You want everyone on an even playing field. But like they don't like there's no competitive in Anthem. So they it would be nice to just get like the option. Like Monster Hunter has the option. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I set mine to like pretty mode or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's one of the most surprising things I've heard come out of this whole thing is how people are talking about the best part of Anthem so far is all about like how good it plays. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. there's like there's like three story missions in the uh, that have like a little mini arc within them, um, which I thought was fairly amusing. Uh, Sam, yeah, I agreed. But uh, like he saw it, a decent amount of it. I skipped through as much as I could because I, after I like I saw a couple of jokes and I was like, I'll probably appreciate this more in the full game. So I just skipped through as much as I could. Sure. That and like sense, the, the conceit of like the mission and like like the actual what you do in the missions is nothing like groundbreaking. Uh, you know, it's a lot of go to this point, shoot these guys. Go to this point, shoot these guys. Stand on this point. The hell is that noise? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So it's a lot of like it's a lot of just like kind of generic shooter activities, but like uh, going around, like getting from point to point, uh, using the abilities makes it pretty cool. Uh, and then like there's one environmental story telling, or not environmental story, environmental puzzle that you kind of have to solve. Mm-hmm. That requires you to like really search around the area to find like the clues and like actually look around, uh, which was cool. Uh, as a put and like if they keep doing that throughout the story, I think that'll be like a solid kind of way to break things up. It's not necessarily like a easy thing to solve. Once you know what the solution is, it doesn't change, and so you can just if you rerun it, you can just go and you can put in all the answers. But like you actually have to, like the first time I did it, we looked around for like ten minutes, no communication between the people, and I found one clue, and I was like, okay, here's one clue. I know what this is. I was trying to get everyone to come look at it, so we could figure out what we were looking for. But then no one would come look at it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, That's I don't awesome. know. I don't even know if there's voice chat in this demo. Uh, I didn't hear anyone using it. Um, so I don't know, but yeah, as Anthem's real cool. Uh, I, I'm worried about like mission design, if it's going to like stay fresh or if it's all going to be go to this point, stand on this point. Uh, like I know there's like a little bit of difference, but uh, like there's like some where you're collecting like orbs around the environment, like for the stronghold mission uh which is kind of like their uh strike equivalent strike or raid equivalent depending on the difficulty mm-hmm. uh, and so you like have to fly around and collect these orbs and then bring them back to like shut off one of the relics um that is like making noise and interacting with the anthem of creation or whatever um and so there's the stronghold that's in the game current or in the beta or the demo or whatever they're calling it is got like two sections of that like mixed with a lot of combat which is like actually pretty difficult especially if you're not coordinating and only have like two or three people uh so this is definitely a game where you're going to want to match make into groups with a bunch of people but for the story stuff it kind of sucks because if people just rush ahead then you kind of miss out on a lot of stuff so it might you can like modify the difficulty down to easy so, like, if you want to, and then set your party to private, so you can just do things on private or on easy yourself, if you want to see it all, maybe. Right. And in our chat, it was mentioned that one of the worries that was coming out of the demo beta, whatever, is kind of the same as what was coming out of the Destiny 1 beta. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, what if this is actually all there is? Like, what if it's tiny? What if there's not as many areas as we're expecting? Uh, there, so, there they limit you in the areas you can go to if you try and go outside of like a certain area in like the free play mode uh it'll be like no you've got to turn around which is so there's not a huge space to explore there was more to explore in the alpha it seemed like i don't know if i can actually say that but um 
uh, oh, there, no. yeah, yeah. I don't know if we're gonna get. I'm gonna get fined a million dollars. Getting uh, us banned from Twitch again. Yeah, if you know me. <laughs> not safe for Twitch. Uh, but basically, um, oh, maybe I was doing something weird and missing something. But yeah, so it seems like it's a like they're kind of restricting you a lot. But the map is pretty big. Um, but and they've got they've got like free DLC promised. Uh, free expansions. Pro- I don't know if it's DLC if it's free, but free expansions promised for like the next year. Uh, so they'll be adding content, but you know we don't know what that content's going to look like. Is it like more zones? Is it more like story content or like side content? Or you know what is that going to look like? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, hard to say. Uh, and so yeah, the thing I'm worried about is. The mission design like is that all the missions are is there more variety uh what is the story actually like and stuff like that um so i don't know if it's a day one pickup for me especially with my financial situation right now but i am looking forward to being able to play the full game and do all the customization stuff uh, yep. sam your thoughts um, I mean, I always knew I was going to buy this one day one. I think the the like the only games that are really guaranteed for me to play the Q one are like Anthem and Division two, uh, just because I love loot shooters. I love loot games. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the game. Uh, I really want to give it a bit more time. Um, I want to try out the Colossus because that's one that I've not really seen anything about online. Mm-hmm. Um, and like uh, on the giant bomb, unfinished. Brad talked a lot about the uh, storm. That was his favorite, and he was like, "Oh, but I also played the interceptor," and he said he didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And honestly, looking at the way the interceptor plays, it doesn't look like my cup of tea, really, either. It's like a um, the interceptor is the fast, like agile, up close one, uh, whereas the storm is more like your like kind of spell caster kind of stay back and uh do damage from afar more like a, yeah. a warlock in uh destiny yeah so yeah the the although it looks like they're doing a lot more ability stuff as the storm yes like, yes watching some videos like they're basically constantly spell casting mm. um uh, also, yeah, so, whereas like on the ranger, uh, just real quick, you can, uh, so when you start out with the ranger, you've got like a grenade and like a missile that you can shoot. And the, that's on like a five second cooldown or something. Uh, and then with the storm, uh, you're like one of your abilities, I think to start is like a, like a series of like ice blasts or it might be fire. I changed it like real quick, but yeah, so basically like five ice blasts real quick instead of just one like thing and if you hit them with enough ice then they'll freeze and then you can combo off that but uh, please continue sam so yeah like i had um mine was like a basically the range is like iron man mixed with the uh soldier from mass effect so it's very much like um, the soldier in terms of how they play in normal combat. Sorry, there's a really loud cat. <laughs> yeah, I was just laughing at that. Attacking the chair. Wow, you're letting your cat do that? Can I'm done. No, he's done. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, like, plays a lot like the soldier from Mass Effect. I always played Vanguard in Mass Effect. Um, it's interesting to not see any, like, hybrid classes in anthem so like each class is like you are this thing and that's the thing you are Mm -hmm. whereas in mass effect there was like the engineer class and the like the hacker slash biotics class and like you know i I think that's pretty typical for these (laughs) yeah i would agree (laughs) but is there Uh, does it seem like you're 100 percent locked in or is there like a skill tree that you could kind of pull some stuff from the engineer if you're a, a vanguard equivalent kind of thing uh you uh you are not limited to only one class at any point like between missions you can change your javelin and like go in as a different javelin if you want okay. um but do you, like you cannot mix and match okay. like abilities from javelin to javelin okay and also, I feel like it'd be a lot easier for them to add new classes because adding a javelin is a lot different to adding a class in Destiny where you'd have to replay the entire game. 
uh, sorry, my cats have decided that now is the exact time to have a <laughs> long, drawn-out battle. I really wish we, we were streaming our cameras, because there was just... Was that Gus just <laughs> zooming by? Yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful. He's gone upstairs now, so maybe it'll be quiet for two minutes. Um, yeah, so you can probably hear him run past on the microphone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We oh, yeah. We, we hear him. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like the the rockets and the grenade recharge super quickly, um, and the combo system seems quite interesting. And you can combo the rockets and the grenade, so I could like freeze someone with a freeze grenade and then shoot them with a rocket to do extra damage. Yeah. Um, I tried a load of different weapon types, so like I tried the single shot rifle, I tried the uh, assault rifle, the shotgun, and the machine gun. Uh, they were all pretty good. I picked up some weapons for some other classes, which was annoying. Um, so I until, picked up you, until you unlock that class, and you're like, "Oh, sweet! I've got mm -hmm. a weapon. I've got a weapon for this class." Yeah, like I picked up a weapon, and I was like, "Oh, that looks dope! I want to try that." And then I was like, "This isn't in the inventory. How can I equip it?" And I googled it, and it was a Colossus gun. Mm -hmm. And I'm that's fine. I mean, like. Almost every game now like only drops equipment that you can personally use. So it'd be interesting to see whether that lasts. You can personally use it. It's not like Destiny where you have to make a whole new character and then level that character up to like, you know, 30 or 40 or whatever it is now. Like you can just like once you get unlock that javelin, then it's available to you. And I think that's like I, that that works for me way better than like the Destiny. Like, sorry, well, if, um, uh, like, so say I haven't unlocked the Colossus and it's the last one that I decide to unlock and I just get all these it. drops that are useless. And you just throughout salvage it. it. It's not, it's not useless. Yeah. You salvage it and then you get crafting materials. I'll, I, I mean, uh, but, like Destiny does the same thing. It's like, oh, I got this. Why did I get this hunter, like, emblem or hunter cape? You don't get, you don't get anything that isn't for your class in Destiny. You do. I've gotten stuff that isn't for my class. Uh, the point is... Oh God, those cats are going crazy. Uh, yeah. The point it's because it's almost bedtime for them. Yeah. Uh, point is, Anthem seems pretty good, and I look yeah. forward to playing that more in the future. So, I got questions about that thing. Yeah, yeah, please. So, do you think that that game is the kind of game where it could kind of be like World of Warcraft where uh, like in the sense that you start and the world is in one state and you go through a bunch of events and the world changes states. Mm -hmm. So you would have to pull people to your current state of the world or whatever. Uh, I don't think so. Mm, the story. Yeah. Because the only reason that I would say no is because you can, uh, you can play missions that you haven't unlocked in the story. Yeah. So that um, but yeah. it's nice because then if you are with people in your group, then you can do just whatever. do the stuff they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's maybe uh, power level or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. But the other one I had was like, how much Bioware comes through? Like, does it just feel like a big ass EA action game, or does it feel like it has Biowareness to it? Uh, in the like the demo, it's hard to say. There's like some decent writing. Uh, like I said, with the story stuff. Uh, I laughed so, at one joke. Uh, so, like, there is enough to be like, oh, okay, they've actually like written like you know an interesting little story arc for this um, part of the demo. Um, whether that you know where that actually falls in the game, if that's actually like the level ten ish mission, yeah. you know, I don't know. Maybe that's like level eighteen mission or level like four mission. I have no idea. Um, but like, you know, it seems like they've got like some neat ideas for like things that can happen in that world. Um, but what the overall, and like, they give you some like dialogue choices. You can say like, oh, I love working together as a family or I'm more of a loner or like, uh, Kenneth from 30 rock is a bartender. Hmm. Uh, and Interesting. yeah, I was like, wait, why, why do I know this sweet voice? What is it from? That's amazing. Uh, and like, he's like asking for like help with women. And so you can give him advice on like, oh, you should like, oh, you want to be an actor. And this lady's being like a little coming on a little strong. You should 
act like you're someone who's good at saying no. And he's like, that's a great idea. And then you come back later. He's like, thanks for the advice. It was real good. That's but amazing. now there's this girl I really like who lives down the street from me or who lives next door. But, and, uh, she asked me to like hold on to a package for her in case she isn't home, but I don't know. And I'm like, well, do you know what's in it? Or is like, you know, it could be dangerous. He's like, you're right. I should be better safe than sorry. Do you think he has the same turn that Kenneth does in Dirty Rock? And it turns out that character's immortal. Uh, you know, it's hard to say. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it's possible. Where great. are you from? Stone Mountain, Georgia. It's yeah. just the same character. <laughs> That would be amazing. Well, if he's immortal, maybe he lived all the way into the Anthem universe. He onto onto a spaceship. And, a spaceship. Yeah. Uh, so, and there's like tons of lore stuff like scattered around the uh, around Fort Tarsus that you can kind of pick up. A lot of it is like not available in the demo, God. so you can't pick it, but you can see where it is. Every time you say that, I think you're saying Fort Taurus. <laughs> I was exclusively referring to it as the tower uh, because my mind is broken by destiny. Ford so. Taurus is really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, that's Anthem. Uh, that's available in less than a month. Yeah. Yeah. 15th for those with EA access. Yep. So Not me, because my PC is not a fan of it right now, but... yeah. Which is probably where I'd want to play it, honestly. Yeah, the frame rate would be nice. Yeah. But, so Andre. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, assuming we're done with Anthem for the moment. Uh, so if you, please. Yeah. Ahead. Do you, when, if or when do you plan on playing some Kingdom Hearts? Because I imagine next week when we have Pat back, at least, there's going to be some Kingdom Hearts talking here. All right. Is there? I don't know I if there he is. Wants to finish the Witcher first. I, yeah, I don't think I, I, I plan on starting Tuesday. I believe Tuesday night is the earliest I will be able to play, uh, because I will get home from work and hopefully it will be installed. Uh, so yeah, hopefully, I, hopefully I will play a a fair amount of hours in the Kingdom Hearts three next week. Yeah. Why? Why do you ask? I'm just curious because I might end up playing a little bit of it as well. Yeah, uh, I'm planning, planning to do like a like a video playthrough and put that up on our Gaming Fix YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, but I gotta later today. I have to like see if that setup all works. I have to disconnect my PSVR if I want to use my camera because my current setup does not allow me to have both plugged in. Right. So yeah, I have to I have to figure all that out. But I plan to play Kingdom Hearts. I've got it pre-ordered um, already. So yeah, this seems it seems like it's been divisive. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know the Allegra Frank review was not super hot on it, but it's every other review. I haven't read any of them because I, I want to go in fresh. I want mm -hmm. my own opinions. The only thing, I, the only. <laughs> review that i've seen is i think jordan olamon uh on twitter called kingdom hearts 3 the metal gear solid 4 of the kingdom hearts games man and so do you I, go through an irradiated tunnel or whatever to probably Hell dude yeah. but he said they do not take off their shirts and fight at the ends well so that's you know not game of the year yeah. caliber no, so definitely not i don't know it's it seems interesting it's especially because uh, yeah. it's like if discounting all of the other mainline games that came out on 3ds etc uh <laughs> just looking at kingdom hearts 2 it's been what 15 years uh 13. The, yeah i think yeah, 2004 so 15 i don't know when 13. it came out but it came out in like the spring i like process 13 in her review that's i don't know uh i remember uh when kingdom hearts 2 came out like i because I wanted it so bad. And like yeah, my family wasn't like super wealthy at all. Like the opposite of wealthy. Uh, we were, you know, pretty hard for cash. But I was like, oh my God, I need to play Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, and so that was like, you know, begging my mom, like, oh, can we go to the game store? Can we go to Game Crazy? Like next to the Hollywood video. And they were like sold out. And they were sold out for like a week. Because like, you know, they'd get pre-orders in. But they got like 
they didn't have enough to fill their, fulfill their pre-orders. So they had to like keep, so I got on the list and eventually they finally called me like, okay, yeah, you can come and get your copy. And I was so happy. And like, I, I played, I did like the get, get to level 99, get all the like high tier weapons and stuff like that. And Kingdom Hearts, I had the walkthrough. I had all sorts of crazy stuff. Not really, not not all sorts of crazy. I had the walkthrough and I had the game and I spent a lot of time playing the game. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's a fascinating series. And yeah. the fandom can be very rabid, as has been shown by some of the yeah. comments. But Yeah. Uh, uh they need to chill the fuck out, you know. It's a it's a video game. It's like I, I understand like you like your video games, but hey, some people some people are disappointed. Uh that's that's totally fair. I ex I, I, my expectations for Kingdom Hearts three are very strange. Like, I, I saw that trailer and I went, oh no! I, the initial launch trailer, mm-hmm. I think, because they had like little bits, or not launch trailer, like the initial announcement trailer, they had little bits of gameplay, like the tiniest, like thirty frames of gameplay or something, and I was like, oh no! Oh, it it looks the same, <laughs> it's the same fucking game it's gonna be it's like you know at that point like, oh it's 10 years later and it's the same fucking game are you are you serious yeah uh and so um uh, and from what i've heard i think maximilian dude who is um he's big in the fighting game youtube scene uh well like went to a preview event and he was like it's exactly how you remember and i was like oh no that's weird uh, you know, presumably it is improved. Uh, like there are some new mechanics and stuff that they've added. Hopefully it is like more fluid. Like the improvements from Kingdom Hearts 1 to Kingdom Hearts 2 are like night and day. Like yeah. Kingdom Hearts 2 is a much better playing game in every aspect. But if there, it's like, games have come a long way since then. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Kingdom Hearts 2 came out in 2005. No wait, that's just no 2000. Well, 2006 for America because it says initial release date December 22nd, 2005. Gotcha. But I, I don't think that's it for North America. Let me double check. Either way, hell of a long time. North America, ago. March 28th, 2006. Yeah, so 13 so years. long time ago. I don't know, man. It could be great, but uh, I've been watching what is it, Dream Drop Distance on YouTube, <laughs> and like. I, and I watched back cover and all these things. I've been, so I'm trying to catch up on the side lore because they're all mainline titles, apparently. Yeah. Fucking Nomura. Uh, and <clears throat> I do this so you don't have to. Uh, Oh, do you have questions about the Kingdom Hearts lore? Let me just sort of oh, try and fill God, in any. No, 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 <laughs> no. Not even going to no. approach that one. <laughs> I have multiple questions. So, okay, okay. So, are there any characters that, if you spell their names backwards, that they, it reveals a secret about them? Uh, no. Backwards, no. Not like uh, what's his name, uh, Yasid or whatever. Yen Sid. Well, I mean, but he's not he disney you know uh, he's from fantasia but like besides him no <laughs> okay that was it that's all the questions i had all right great wow. so you said you had you said questions well they would have expanded on the first one okay well okay well, well okay maybe this will uh there are multiple characters whose names have been rearranged and had an x inserted into their names oh how about 420 Okay. Right. What? <laughs> no, uh, like Sephiroth is in the game. Sephiroth has not been norted. He's not At XX. XX. Why isn't he XX walk. Sephiroth 420 XX? Because uh, this is a family game. Sorry. Yeah. So he's Sephiroth, Sephiroth, Sephiroth 69. 69. <laughs> For the sisters. Um... <laughs> That's not going to make any sense. Nope. That's <laughs> fine. Gonna... You're gonna seem real fucking weird, and it's not gonna be me for once. <laughs> Resident Evil Two. People are reacting really positively to that. Are you gonna play it? Uh, yes, absolutely. Someday, once I have money. Wonderful. Uh, 
yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm anyway. I'm watching those Kingdom Hearts movies, and there's a lot of bullshit that you have to wade through to get to the stuff that like actually matters for the story. Yeah. Like if you're playing uh, the game, all main stories. No, I'm not saying they're not main stories. The problem is there's a lot of like small stories within the main stories. So like you go to like fucking Quasimodo land and you got to talk about how Quasimodo is <laughs> sad for like 40 minutes. Quasimodo land. You mean France? No, it's like the town of Fox or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're all like cordoned off little worlds. And <laughs> so it's the town of Fox is its own world. Okay sure uh, nothing exists outside of it um and so you have to go there and you have to talk to quasimodo for 40 minutes about how he's sad to get like 10 seconds of cutscene about where like the bad guys from the other kingdom hearts game show up and they like say ominous things and then they disappear and then you go to tron world and digital jeff bridges is like oh i took over tron now he's called rinsler and then you have to go through another like 40 minutes of that to get another like 30 seconds of another bad guy showing up and saying ominous things See, that sounds like the opposite of metal gear where you're going through five hours of cutscene to get 20 minutes of gameplay you're i mean yeah five hours of gameplay to get 20 I, I seconds mean, of some, cutscene. sometimes sometimes you are doing that uh it is not so far off but uh, so like if you're playing the game it's fine it's just right now it's really chapping my hide because i just want like the i want like the lore stuff i don't need to know about how quasimodo is sad there's a um 30 minute kingdom hearts timeline on youtube yeah but see that's not what i i, I want like the deets I, I want them i want them deets girlfriend but like they make it hard to get the deets i just want cut out all the all the non cut out all the disney bullshit and give me only the kingdom hearts bullshit right now is what i want so you, and, you want to dtr the kingdom hearts franchise uh, dtr define the relationship sure yes and this relationship is you give me all the information about your original characters and where they are at and then we can go from there I have no desire to play Dream Drop, Drop Distance. Uh, I have no desire to play A Fragmentary Passage. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's very frustrating. If you could cross another two universes, which ones would you pick? Like this is because Kingdom Hearts is Final Fantasy cross Disney, right? Mm -hmm. Like with would, its own original stuff, and the world ends with you in Dream Drop Distance. Oh right, I forgot about that. <laughs> the, like. I would love to see. Well, I'm just going to use Final Fantasy again. I'd like to see uh -huh. Final Fantasy and Marvel. That'd be funny. Oh God! <laughs> no, see, what you want is the uh, Shrek cinematic universe okay. and Dragon Quest. <laughs> oh God! That would fit. The oh, slimes God. are all green and they have like antenna. Oh wow! Yeah, and you can ride the donkey. <laughs> Man, that sounds <laughs> wonderful. But the Shrek still quest. fucks the dragon. How about the donkey still fucks the dragon? Oh, okay. oh. yeah. How sure. about how about how to train your dragon and Monster Hunter? I thought you were gonna say how to train your dragon and Shrek and say the dragon. donkey still fucks the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> donkey always fucks the dragon. Yeah. Uh, oh man, I, mm, two. Okay, two universes. Dragon Ball. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> when he Goku. takes off his weighted training shirt Goku trying to fight Eeyore yeah, a heffalump's come in and just fuck up Piccolo and Goku with his head with half his body stuck inside the honey hole on Rabbit's house <laughs> <laughs> the ass just sticking out <laughs> uh, oh yeah I don't fucking they should put, they should put Goku in Kingdom Hearts they should, put Goku in, they should put Goku in a lot of things. They should. Uh, but yeah, no. If I if I was to cross over something, it'd be like it'd be Dragon Ball and some other like non anime Star Wars. <laughs> Dragon Ball and Star Wars, sure. Why not? Uh, Goku could feel the Force. <laughs> sure. It's just a team up movie. It's just Darth Vader and Goku back to back. Actually, no. You know what? It would Fighting be, resistance. No, I know what it would be. It would be Dragon Ball and the Platinum 
game universes. Dragon Ball versus Platinum. Jeez. Dragon Ball and that's it. Yes, exactly. That... Which segues into the game that I have been playing. That is an anthem. Bayonetta. <laughs> nice. Bayonetta 1. <laughs> yes, Bayonetta 1. I've played Bayonetta 2. I've never played Bayonetta 1 before now. Uh, Wh- which platform? PC? PC, yes. Cool. I think that is the... I mean, it's also on Switch, but it is the other... the main platform it is available for i guess is pc that port is kind of rough uh like i've got more than enough like i've got more than enough power to run it but it's just like the frame rate drops uh the random crashing a lot of rough stuff like that which is a bummer but um like i got to a point like i got to a checkpoint that just like broke my save and so I had to like restart the level because every time I tried to load it, it would just crash the game. Weird. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what happened there. Uh, but yo, that game's real fucking cool when it's uh, doing its thing and working right. And you watch this cutscene, and you're like, damn, they're breakdance fighting. Uh, yeah. So for those who don't know, Bayonetta, I don't know. How do you not know about Bayonetta? Like, oh, God, she's so cool. Uh, Bayonetta is an action, stylish action, character action game, stylish character action game from Platinum in the likes of like a Devil May Cry or a DMC, like a Ninja Gaiden. Not really. Uh, other games in that like genre. Metal Gear Revengeance. Yeah, Metal Gear Revengeance. Uh, so you're you know third person uh, running around the world uh, doing extensive, ridiculous looking combos. Uh, Bayonetta is a woman in a skin tight suit made of like leather and then also her hair, which she controls with magic to make like dragons and shit Mm -hmm. Uh, and giant feet that come out of the air. She's basically like a dominatrix, but also a witch, like a bullet. She's called a bullet witch because she uses guns and she's got, she, she holds two guns in her hands. But then she also has two guns on her feet, and so she 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 is a very dangerous woman. I don't know how she shoots those guns on her feet. I guess magic. Uh, it's God. Uh, well, one thing people don't really talk about in those games, I feel like, is the enemy design. Hmm. Uh, like you're fighting like angels mostly, at least in Bayonetta One. I think there are some demons in Bayonetta 2 maybe later in Bayonetta 1 there are some demons but for at least the first half of the game where I'm at you're fighting like angels from Paradiso which is their name for like heaven or whatever the good place I guess technically sure. uh, I think it's light at least it's the light place uh, and, but the uh, angels are just incredibly grotesque and kind of in line with like traditional like old style descript old descriptions of angels where it's like they've got a thousand mouths and when they speak lightning strikes the earth and things like that um sounds kind of like dark siders in that way too yeah or like uh what's the other thing i was thinking of like uh persona when they do oh, like sure. they're like angels and demons and stuff sure. like this one's just a chariot that's also a dick like what the fuck <laughs> this one is My just a persona character my favorite is the the demon who's just sitting on a toilet. Mm-hmm. Belphegor, yep. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> He's floating in the air. Uh, so, uh, but so like one of the bosses is it's a giant head, but upside down. And then it's got like two dragons, two dragon heads like coming off of it. Yep. And then also like some wings and like, I don't know, it's just like real cool design. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Pat's not here, but I was really wondering, like, who some of your favorite fictional bartenders are? Because Rodan is just, like, real good in this game. He uh, runs the Gates of Hell, and when you bring him back, like, uh, LP, you get gold LPs for completing certain, like, combat sequences. And then you bring those back, and he goes into Hell, and he comes back covered in blood and all beat up, and he gives you a new weapon. So, uh, who are some of your favorite uh, fictional bartenders? In video games or outside of video games? Any, anywhere, any, any bartender, any media. I think oh, what's the bartender in uh, Catherine is pretty good. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Yeah, um, 
you in Valhalla. Mm. Is that the is, dog? Is it the dog? I don't know, but like, wait, is it, wait, okay, is that the dog? Are you talking about the dog bartending game? No, I'm talking about the spaceship oh. bartending game. Isn't I thought that? Do dogs come into your spaceship? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, now I need to look this up because you might be right. I cannot remember, but uh, um, for games, that's what I would pick. Otherwise, it's Guinan. Uh, Sam, <laughs> you're both shaking your heads. <laughs> No, no, that was exactly what I wanted, actually. <laughs> we all know that Guinan's a trash cameo. Why I wanted, why I wanted Spam cameo. here, or why I wanted uh, Pat here. A cameo? She's in, like, over <laughs> half the episodes. Is she? I think so. She's in a lot of them. Wow, it sounds like Sam's a casual. I feel like there were whole seasons she wasn't in. She probably wasn't in, like, the first two, to be fair. She's in early stuff loads, I feel like. Really? Uh, I can't remember. I mostly remember TNG from like season three onwards. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so Bayonetta is real cool. There, like the, I think the last thing I did was a boss fight where at the end Bayonetta threw a, um, like a tanker or like a tanker truck, a semi truck with like a gas tanker. Uh, onto the boss and then a little cherub statue like a peeing cherub landed on top and then she shot like the line of gas but then the line of gas didn't make it all the way to like the fire didn't make it all the way to the tanker so it didn't blow up so then she just shot the cherub in the dick and, like it followed like the camera follows the bullet right into like the cherub's dick and then it all explodes it was pretty good sick i so Guinan was in 29 episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. Really? Yeah. That's like none. Never mind then. I was Star Trek The Next Generation had 178 episodes. Damn. I thought she was in Trash far more. It's a cameo. She was also in the movies though. One movie. What? I thought it was two. She's not an insurrection or first contact. She's definitely in Generations. She's a core character in Generations. Yeah, she's core in Generations. I thought she was in Nemesis. Oh god, if she's a nemesis though, that feels worse than I remember. <laughs> what do you got against Whoopi Goldberg? I'm nothing against Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> I, she's on The View, and The View is a terrible TV show that should not be on the air. So oh, I have god. that against her. So now we're banned from The View also. Do you know, that's, I did us a favor. You're welcome. I think I've already been banned from The View for other reasons that I can't go into because of an NDA. Um, but uh, I can go into how trash Guinan is as a character. Just talk shit about Barbara Walters. Uh, 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 she's a nice lady. I don't know. Maybe Barbara Walters sucks. I don't know. Go smear some Vaseline on this camera. She's probably uh, a Republican. Probably. She's old. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Did you know she was born in the same year as Anne Frank? And yeah. Martin Luther King Jr. And Martin Luther King Jr. Anyways, let's do let's do let's get away from this. <laughs> Bayonetta is great. Uh, Bayonetta is great. You might say she's the Martin Luther King Jr. of video games. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember Martin Luther King Jr. shooting people in the dick and exploding and turning into dragons, but I'm not it's American. What, what if he did? Isn't that a world you want to live in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, in the multiverse, it it could happen. And did. It did happen. <laughs> well, in one universe, Martin Luther King was just a shadow. He had his two pistols. He had the red scarf up to his nose. He was taking fools out. This is <laughs> anyway. Uh, any any game to be? Do y'all ever do like a 2019? What are you looking forward to? Yeah, episode? we did that on our last episode, 2018. Okay. okay, okay, I missed that one. I was looking forward to Anthem, mm-hmm. like the Division Two, like... Steinscape, Shenmue Three. Oh, you mean uh, Donnie Darko, or you mean an episode of The Big Bang Theory taped over Donnie Darko? Oh, God, that's the worst description. <laughs> I still don't know why they decided to use that. <laughs> Anime Vice. Yep. I am 
looking through some of the really quickly looking through some of the releases mm -hmm. and uh, I'm actually looking forward to Tropico six. And I, I've got like six or seven games in the first three months of this year that I'm really looking forward to, and I can't play any of them. Yeah, but I'm looking forward I, to I, MK, I, MK11. Seems really neat. Yes, I am too. Uh, yes, Mortal Kombat 11 looks real neat. Uh, DLC for uh, I actually haven't watched any of the content for MK11. I just I know it'll be neat. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope Cassie Cage is in it because I really loved her in 10, like playing as her, her x-ray move. She like punched guys in the balls and then her, their balls exploded. Yep. Uh, so it was real good. She also took selfies. Uh, yep. Uh, that was my favorite fatality. <laughs> yeah. Mine too. Um, I had the intention of playing Steins Gate, but I know I won't because it comes out five days before Anthem and there's, I don't know, I've had that kind of time. Yeah, I can't dump uh, 30 hours into it in like three days, four days. No. And if I don't play around. a game like that in once, one kind of sitting, like two weekends, I won't finish it. Get it on Switch? Yeah, I could do. <laughs> <laughs> should I add uh, uh, should I add your cats as a guest to today's episode? <laughs> probably. Yeah. Gus, Gus is a very noisy boy. Okay, so I can tell. Um, oh, uh, Trials Rising, by the way. Oh yeah, that's, that's next month. Yeah, Just that's February. Uh, I love, February. I love Charles, but I, did you play any of the? Can you talk about beta? Yeah. That uh, Allison and I talked about it when it was oh, okay. when it was happening. It was it was oh, a really okay. strong beta. There were some technical issues, but it was right, it was right, a really okay. strong beta. I remember. That. Why not? Yeah. Pardon? Um, yeah, so I've made a rule that I'm not allowed to buy any more games until Anthem comes out, and then after Anthem, no games until the division, just because. I'm sitting on Red Dead and Yakuza, and I haven't finished either of them. And they're both like 70 hour games. Yep. And a 63 um, uh, for Red Dead if you go by my PlayStation. I've seen a lot of people. Like, like, I've seen multiple people with like 6,000 hours Jesus. on their game time. Like, I think one person was like 6,555. Like, yo, what the fuck? That's a lot of hours. I I bet mine was barely a thousand. Uh, mine wasn't even a thousand, and For I played a lot of games. PlayStation, I'm mean, probably like two hundred, maybe. I like I split my time between like PC and PlayStation, but like holy shit, six thousand. Yeah. Like, does that count idle time though? Because if there's idle time in there, then I, sure. I mean, if it's if the game is running, then yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, there's some weird stuff with how that counts. Like, does it count Netflix? Uh, no okay. it only it counts games okay. but like the stuff it counts for like ps plus games is weird because like some stuff is online but it doesn't like destiny apparently people are like, saying it didn't count destiny as an online game oh unless maybe if you were doing like crucible but like because uh, like i played 90 hours of dragon ball fighters but it said like i spent 14 hours online <laughs> so I, I don't know um are either of you guys looking forward to Sekiro? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can pause that game, apparently. Yeah. Like, which is which is crazy to from. Yeah, exactly. So you can pa you can pause that game. Uh, you you've got like a revive mechanic, like so you can die and then revive in the same spot. You can do that multiple times. So I don't know. Uh, it might be a game that can get more casual players, like someone like Sam, who is not a fan of the like the from kind of model uh mm -hmm. maybe it could get someone like him in but also it's asking people i guess to be more active in their combat as opposed to like a dark souls where you're kind of more blocking uh closer to bloodborne where it's like a parry heavy approach right um, which sounds but, cool yeah i'm yeah. interested but i'm not sold yet uh i i have liked every from game since blood or since uh demon souls i didn't play demon souls when it came out but like since dark souls i've been on the from train um like i don't think dark souls 2 is incredible but i think there's some stuff in there that's good uh so uh, yeah uh, they weren't, can weren't a fan of chrome it. hounds uh, i never never touched it or sorry no armored core not chrome hounds never touched that either uh <laughs> I, I would not be opposed to playing a new armored core if they made one but uh armored it's souls oh no that's what people want uh that's what people say they want i don't know I, yeah uh people thought that the Sekiro was going to be tenchu but anyway anyways uh, 
Yeah, there's there's so many games I want to play in the next few months that it sucks. Because <sighs> I'd like to play things when they come out. I'll play them eventually. I'll get them on sale. It'll be great. But I just I like to play. I tend them. to not get into things as much if I don't play them when they come out. Uh, for me, it's just I like to hear. I like to be. Pl- I like to be as unspoiled as possible going in. Yeah. Also, yeah. absolutely, yeah. And being part of the zeitgeist is pretty interesting, especially yeah. if it's something that has a lot of hidden stuff. Like, I I was, uh, I played Fez when it came out. Like same. before, oh, everybody, no. yeah, like, same. Yeah, like before everybody knew that all the crazy shit was hiding in there, and mm-hmm. watching that unfold was super cool. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I so. played it. So I played Fez way after the fact, and so I knew about all that stuff before I yeah. went in. Um. So yeah. There's, yeah, it was it was yeah, great it, being part yeah. of the zeitgeist. I totally get it. So there, there's not so much of that in games now. It seems that there's a little bit here and there, um, but I, I I feel like it's pretty rare for something like that to happen. Uh, I maybe below is the closest I've come to that, but I I haven't touched that since uh, before winter vacation before i went on break um i need to get back to that but my fucking oh my body's on floor 17 and it's dark and i don't have a lantern and like pick up all my stuff i'm in the midst of like a bunch of tentacles that want to kill me same and there's there's no way back up i can only go down from where i'm at so like i just like oh it sucks that's an interesting game. Uh, I want to play more, but it's just, it's such a burden. I think, oh, I have so far to go. Uh, miles to go before I sleep. But you know what? doesn't have miles to go before it sleeps. This podcast. This guy. You've got kilometers to go because you're in Europe. We actually measure distance in miles. Uh, miles in the UK, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right, <laughs> you got stones to go before you sleep. <laughs> we do use imperial measures for stone as well, yeah, for body weight. Still don't know what a stone is. I don't know what a st- how does a stone convert to kilograms? 13 pounds. Why, why would so, you why so would you measure kilograms. in that? Hey, you're talking to a country that has gotten rid of coins, so there used to be like half pennies and quarter what? pennies why why what's the point and then something called a shilling yep is that Did less than a penny it? no i don't know i think it was like 30 pence or something okay that seems something it's like a weird number but okay oh i should probably know my granddad talks about it all the time oh well it's like your granddad knew about it then like he, that doesn't count that's not that's not even real Okay. your lifetime a shilling was worth one twentieth of a pound so okay. 12 okay. pence why? okay wait what sure what? Fuck it. why not oh, okay. wait what i don't i don't understand british money <laughs> i'm not good don't at math but that, does, that doesn't check out does it the uh, interestingly the um Shilling was only discontinued in 1990, so shillings were around when I was alive. Yeah, uh, you know that's that's something. Uh, bronze canuts, do you have those? You have gold galleons. Probably at some point. Uh, the shilling was first minted in the reign of Henry the Seventh, and it was called the Testoon. Damn. Okay. Well. I know. Uh, actually, the thing that has miles to go before it sleeps is this podcast because we won't shut up. Uh, <laughs> Rest in peace, Sam. Uh, yeah, so that is going to do it for this Gaming Fix episode 54. I uh, got it right this time yep. uh, on January 27th, wow. 2019. Wow, 20, you did 20, it. 20, nope, 20, 26th. 26th. And 27th. I'm so good today. Uh, we talked about Anthem, uh, Garfield Rush, Gree, Bayonetta, Picross, Konami, Picross, or what, Pixel Puzzle. Collection. Tents and Trees. Yeah. That's, those are all the games we talked about. I don't know. That's 
new thing I'll try. I'll try to re- recap the whole podcast so people can remember. Fuck Kingdom Hearts. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Fuck, fuck all the all the stuff where you just want the lore, but you have to watch Quasimodo be sad. Uh, you know, that's anyway. Thanks for joining us, Alex. Where can people find you? Uh, GitHub. No, oh, okay. It's owned by Microsoft. Uh, are you one of like the free depository repositories? Deposit re- repositories, right? I don't know. <laughs> repositories, yes. I have both the free repositories. I both have public and private ones. Ooh. Okay. Nice. Uh, where it's can people you. find your private repositories, Sam? Uh, you can find my public repositories on oh, YouTube. God. <laughs> I, you can find those on YouTube. It's not that's where I'm, thing I want to watch. Nope. That's, that's where I'm making my mark these days. Uh, I put that on the Pornhub. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah, if you go on YouTube, my YouTube username because I can't change it is from like 19 years ago. It's oh. SpiderFan2099. Thanks for the PSN ID. I don't think YouTube's that old. Whatever, it's older than you think it is, I think. <laughs> Whatever. Um, uh, it's linked on... All, my YouTube channel is linked everywhere on all of my social media profiles. And all my social media profiles are at SGCH, pretty much, in season five. Okay, cool. And you can find me on Twitter, uh, posting weird videos of the Anthem beta uh, demo at CoolSlaw, C-O-O-L-S-L-4-W. Uh, and you can join us next week, same time, same place, uh, on Twitch, on Facebook, uh, anywhere else that, you, that we stream to. YouTube? Probably not. Nah, I don't know. We stream to Twitch. Okay. Or stream, Steam. Stream Steam. to Steam. Oh, there we go. Really? We do? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you can join us next time. And uh, thanks for joining us. So long, everybody. Farewell. Oh, leave us a review. Yeah, leave us a review on any network or whatever you're listening to. And uh, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And, and, and this podcast. And the podcast YouTube a, channel, ideally. I published a new video today. It has cats in it. Okay, that's it. Goodbye. Farewell. No more. No more. No more.